I am Sunny Sanyal. I am a grad student of School of Communication and Information Engineering. Today, I am supposed to talk about science. But science seems difficult when it is conveyed with equations. So here I am to tell you all a story. A story of a boy and his quest for the answers of the questions thrown upon him by the society. So the story starts with the birth of the child. <laughs> I should have cropped some parts of it. However, let's move on. Now, at a certain age, this boy went to school, like he all did. <laughs> he looks a bit happy. I was rather crying on my first day. So, this guy went to school and he studied something similar to this. These are basically analytical and uh, quantitative questions. It is something related to, you need to find something when you have given something. You need to extract the data out of something when you have something in your hand. So basically, it is a linear algebra uh, and it's kind of a common thing in the education system. So basically, my point is, our education system is uh, trying to train us to be an analytical and a quantitative person. Uh, and somehow I think it's true, uh, because if you are a quantitative and analytical person, you are most likely to land, if not in a, a great job, but at least in a good job. But do you really think that uh, this uh, quantitative thing is true? That we make all our judgments in our day-to-day -day life based on numbers? I just want you to just have a thought over it. Until then, I will continue my story. At the age of 14, this guy was challenged by a question. The question was from his mom. His mom asked him how much he loves her. You know, it is the most trivial question uh, by the moms to their children. They just wanted to know how much we love them. But since I already mentioned, this guy is in the making of a quantitative and an analytical person. So he differed to answer in the most stereotypical way, like, Mom, I love you a lot. He just differed. So he started forming some linear equations. Now let me check, how many people in the crowd are good in maths? Do we have someone? I think, yeah, we have lots of faculty. So, okay. So, basically, the next slide, I'm going to disappoint all of you who know maths, because you know, they are terrible equations. They are terrible linear equations. Something like this. <laughs> now, this guy, just consider it, uh, these equations, because these are the equations from a 14-year-old kid. He's just trying to express his love with maths. So basically, this guy is so generous that he gave a 5% share to his dog and a 7% uh, share to his newly appointed English teacher. <laughs> so basically, this guy was young, but he was not a fool. He, he just found that this thing is not going to work. Because love and beauty and something like we feel, the things we feel, they are all abstract. They cannot be defined with crisp numbers. And in linear equations, we basically use crisp numbers. So, eight years passed, and this guy gave up this, this question because it is just his mom. He just forgot about the question. So after eight years, this guy grew up to be a fairly handsome boy, uh, like me. <laughs> a fairly handsome boy. And like any other fairly handsome boy, this guy won a fairly beautiful and a pretty girl. So that day came when he was on his knees and he was proposing a girl. And he said these golden words. You are the most beautiful girl I have ever seen. Will you be mine for the rest of my life? And this girl replied, 
Do you really think I am beautiful? Then tell me how beautiful I am. <laughs> now basically something happened eight years back. His mom asked him to define love and this girl is asking him to define beauty. So the situation ended up in grim and uh, the last words spoken by this girl was when you are trying something similar stuff, at least be truthful to yourself. She thought this guy is a pathetic liar and even he is dumb because he could not justify his own lies. However, our hero was not lying. So he got depressed because the books he read, the education he had, was not sufficient enough to define beauty and love. So that day he promised something to himself that at least maybe in the past few years he will try to prove at least to himself that he was not lying. So, do you really know which is the most significant fruit in the human history? The fruit when fell upon the head of Newton, he discovered gravity and the fruit which has a very special place in our day-to-day -day technological life. Yes, it is a big red apple. So our hero was basically was eating an apple. He was not doing something really great with that apple. He was eating an apple and he was thinking something. So let me take you inside his mind to show you what he is thinking right now. Yeah, let's just have a look. So basically, there are two sets. The one with red, big and juicy apples. And the one with not so red and not so big, apple cores. Okay? So I just want to do an experiment with you all. So please cooperate. Ladies and gentlemen, please close your eyes. Please close your eyes. Just think, you are sitting very comfortably on a chair. Just picturize yourself sitting on a chair. You are holding an apple in your left hand. Beneath your left hand, there is an empty box. So the whole picture looks like this something, like you are sitting comfortably holding an apple in your left hand, beneath your left hand there is a box. Okay? Now take your first bite from the apple. Now the second bite. Go on eating the apple until you reach the apple core. Okay? If you are finished, just throw the apple in that empty box beneath your left hand. Okay? Please open your eyes now. You may all open your eyes. So I have collected all your apple cores from those boxes and I am going to show you the apple cores. Just try to relate. Are they something similar to you? <laughs> Who is this guy? He is so lazy to eat an apple. He just throws full apple. <laughs> wow. So, okay, jokes apart. This may be the shape of the apple you imagined just now. So basically, it's not about the apple. It's, a, it's not about the apple core. It's about the perception of the apple core. So do you realize at what time the apple crossed over from being an apple to be an apple core? Is it when you took your first bite? Is it after the second bite? Or is it after the tenth bite? I'm sure you, you may not be sure because it's about the perception. An apple is an apple, an apple core is an apple core and they are not similar. But the boundary is not defined clearly. The boundary between the apple and an apple core is not defined clearly. This is called fuzziness. So I think uh, this is a house full of students, researchers. They might be knowing this uh, fuzzy logic. 
But however, I will take a while to uh, for the I will take a while to tell the others about this fuzzy logic. In a fuzzy set, uh, it has some members. A member can have a variable degree of membership. So if a member of a fuzzy set is having a degree of membership, say one, then it is fully inside the set. And if a member is having a degree of members membership, say zero, it is fully outside this set. So the partial members of this uh, set is having a degree of membership ranging from zero to one. Okay. So, do you think this idea is complex? Don't worry. Even the guy who invented this idea thought it, it as a complex idea and he said, as complexity rises, precise statements lose its meaning and meaningful statements lose its precision. Fuzzy logic was first introduced in 1965 by Dr. Lofty Ezadeh in his paper, Fuzzy Sets. Until 1980s, it was not so widely accepted in our academia. And then some Japanese firm implemented the fuzzy logic and it was successful. So the whole world is crazy about this fuzzy logic till, till date. <laughs> I just tried to make the picture of Dr. Lofti Asade, but I am not a good painter. You can see. So now to model, to model a mathematical idea, you need two tools. One is a, a mathematical algorithm that is a fuzzy logic. So this guy has this mathematical algorithm in fuzzy logic, but now he lacks data. So he asked 50 female friends to write up the name of the cosmetic they might have used in the past month. Okay? So basically we apply cosmetics all over our body and different parts to make them look good and as a whole that make us look good. So there is an intrinsic relationship between the popular notion of beauty and cosmetics. So the whole idea of this survey was to get information about a female perspective of the parameters of beauty. So basically I segregated the whole data in the form of this pie chart. Most of the cosmetics were applied on the face followed by the lips and then the upper body and then others. So now our hero has this. He has a mathematical algorithm called fuzzy logic and now he has those parameters. They can be called data in face, lips and upper body. So now our hero who is a software engineer, he made an application in MATLAB to fuse these two, this, this uh, fuzzy logic with those parameters. So as you can see, the app really works like if you input a, if you input a picture of a female that is a frontal face upper body look, then you, uh, then you can calculate the beauty. But the thing, I, I just want it to be careful, it's not the general notion of beauty, it's the perception of the beauty of our hero. So please don't get offended. It's not about a general notion of beauty. Like every, it's like it's beauty and she's ugly. It's not like that. It is basically the perception of the beauty of our hero. And it is said that beauty resides in the eye of the beholder. Okay. So he made an interesting application. <laughs> Since there is a time constant, I cannot demonstrate it live, but I will show you a video. So this is the MATLAB code. As you can see, this is our input picture, okay? The picture will get as an input to our system. Then we, the system is going to extract the face and we are going to mark 30 points over the face region, okay? Just have a look. Sorry, it's going to take a while, but it's okay. We are marking some points over the face region. Okay. So 
Now, the system is going to extract the lips from that picture and we're going to mark 15 points over the lips. And uh, for the other parts of the body, it is basically the shoulder to shoulder distance. So I am not displaying it here because it is quite obvious, the shoulder to shoulder distance. So I am not displaying it in this video. So now it is going to show acuteness percentage. So it is basically the beauty, it depends on the perception of a person. So it is calculating the perception of our hero's beauty. So it is 76%. So yeah, I should close it. Now, since uh, from four to five years maybe, this guy when he makes a new friend, a new female friend, he asks them to give their picture. So now, the, our hero of the story has did, uh, did some experiment over 200 to 250 pictures and still he didn't find anyone who is more beautiful than that girl that he proposed. So actually, he was not lying that day and it is henceforth. Thank you for listening.